Hi, this is Pigsy. Um, just want to sort of talk about um, Donald Trump and uh, Hillary. I think this is all um, getting to a, a sort of a, um, it's getting to a key a key point, the crossroads and the roads. I mean, hopefully there's some sort of positive change. Um, I've been having visions of a nuclear war for a bit, and um, um, the nuclear bomb I saw went off is more powerful than anything that's been dropped off before. Um, it also had like almost two mushrooms um, come from it, and it, and to be honest, it wrecked half of the flipping planet. So something ridiculous as that, we don't we don't do not need this sort of stuff. I do not understand why the shadow government and so on are so so uh, crazy like this because they should really sort themselves out um, and see that the future is out out there out in space it's not on earth it's not it's not in turn into, into a nuclear wasteland i mean basically that i think what, what have we got is we've got a group of human beings that act like um they act like a swarm of locusts they go over to a place they destabilize it they infiltrate it they fund things they st they create a, a system a monetary system in place um, and then slowly they start to blackmail and control government. So the tentacles start to stretch out like some sort of infection. And um, then they set up their own plans of warfare, education, different, different control systems in place. And then once they're done with all that, they basically, while everyone's been distracted, they've been um, harvesting in the background as much money as they can, resources. And then they move these resources to another country. They have it sort of be stationed underground. Um, into base and the bases they stuck underground, and then when they decide there's nothing else in that country, it's overpopulated, and they want to cut the relationship on the, of the social responsibility to the people living there. Uh, they basically try to set up something where they can all, all kill them, or may or just mess them up as they go anyway. So hopefully they, they want them to kill themselves, and that seems to be some sort of great moral victory to them, but it's it's not really. I mean. You look at that pattern of behaviour. So all they're doing is is mimicking something that's almost um, parasitic, um, like worms or something, and um, and they think that's great glory or that bring them closer to the creator. I mean, they can't hide what they know inside about themselves and about the um, the type of in insane tyranny that they're bringing upon the planet. Um, I also think when you look at these world powers, there's a, a there's a unity between them all. So, um, at the top of the chain, the New World Order already exists, even if it's like some type of a virtual government. Um, they've all entered into some sort of an agreement, they all work together. Um, I think they're just basically fighting on for who's, who's going to be the upper management. Um, and then lay down the plans for all the others to follow. I think they all they hit their target of reducing the population and... Um, and basically just world dominance. They want a complete dominance. To own the, own the planet, they don't want any resistance. All these um, type of um, pseudo wars, warfare they, they practice um, throughout the planet is just to destabilize governments and take over them or put their own men in place, their own sort of control grid. Um, and that's what it's all about. It's just all this nonsense going on. There's no reason for America to get involved in Syria. There's no reason for for them to even put ISIS into Syria. It's just following through a plan, and other plans will be destabilised. Like they start attacking the Britain, they start attacking other places, basically destroy all their sovereignty, uh, liquidate. That's that's possible. They're doing in that essence. Um, the issue I think with a global war is because I mentioned about this this parasite thing. Basically, I watched an interview with um, this rabbi. And I'm not saying it's a Jewish thing. I'm just saying it's got some Jewish roots in there. And that these probably guys are like um, judo luciferians, is what I would call them, basically. They've taken some of what they learnt from the um, uh, Judaism and then they've... Um, well, they've added the old arcane version of it where they got things, what they would do in Babylon and do mad stuff. Um, basically, do anything you like because you... You pay, put yourself as the God's chosen ones, but then they have this. Um, this is why they've also injected their faith into other other religions because they, the concept they have, is that there's a living God like um, like I, and um, basically he's like almost flesh and blood. But he having something that's living also makes it mortal in some way, or a way it can be injured or you know destroyed in some form. Um, so, so basically, this this living God, 
approves of them because they say so. Um, the reality is that there's the li the living God is is the is the person. That's why I said I, um, because that's what we all are. We all are the living flesh of God. I say we are the gods in that essence, a collaboration of um, consciousness and um, flesh and so on. Um, the eternal God, which is sort of the overseer of it. He is, um, he is the, basically like the Matrix in that sense. He's tapped into that, um, as we know. Um, and he's eternal, so there's no there's no issue there. He's never going to... Um, well, he, she, it doesn't matter what you believe, really, on that, that front, because if something creates both, then they must be of both. But, um, so, the, that's the eternal, and then you've got other things like sort of lower different levels, I think for each de each dimension's meant to have a certain uh, level of consciousness. So there's more of a carnal um, consciousness, like animalistic, and that's probably what people try to tune in and try to put this this idea of Satan. It's sort of like some combination of a, a human animal um, try to try to word the consciousness together a lower dimension with a with the current this this is sort of this dimension of that, um, where you can just take and do what you like and just. Fully, just live on basically instinctive, but even then instincts. If a child's born, the instincts isn't to harm someone. It's just very, very basic things. So it's it's a bit a bit um, silly. I think what they try to do is try to um, create a counter force um, for religion, and it kind of justifies what religion is as well. And um, with these type of um, ju judo spin-offs, um, because Christianity um, is older. Is older than Christ. Um, Christ is like a title there, um, and then there's lots of esoteric stuff. Uh, like the um, basically, basically from your crown, there's oils that are released that go down your spine and stuff like that, and it's maybe like the uh, Chrysler or something of your of your brain. So the Christ within and all this sorts of stuff, um, and and Chris Chris Christianity Chris uh, Christ I and um, so it's Christ I am basically. So it's t telling you what the, it's already uh, like um, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Us. See, it's in the Masonic. Um, but down a different route, you'd have um, uh, basically it's got different, different route like uh, your Zeus, like you Zeus in his essence, um, Jehovah, Zeus, all these sorts of things. So basically, it's a, it's a living God. Um, if we get into all that sort of stuff, at some point in history, that there was people or uh, beings that acted as creators maybe they were advanced maybe they were just the same but they just had the technology and um, they helped to sculpt humanity and in different factions over the years have played different key roles and they see themselves as the kind of god status god is anything really that's probably more superior than yourself um, if i made a machine that was indestructible and was in, uh, intellectually at the same level as me i could say that was sort of like a machine god there um, so god's just a status really I mean, when when something can be destroyed, it's not God or there's demigods. So, so these these things might have been demigods because they they found a way to sort of um, find immortality and use technology and cloning and all these sorts of technology that we're starting to come across now, um, and sculpt themselves. So they may have started off as an original as a, as one species, but they've actually modified themselves to something else. Which goes on to things like greys. What are they? Are they are they some sort of synthetic um, life form that wishes to um, progress into something? Beyond that, um, it could even be that they were damaged in a certain way, so they put themselves into a more um, synthetic type body. Um, so there's lots, of, there's just so much information there. But the thing is, it's not something that can be proven. It's a bit like these, all this um, reptilian stuff that people go on about. That you tell you more information. I mean, you can set, you might sense something in yourself. There's some truth there, but unless you can actually see it face to face, it's going to always be a bit, um, a bit lucid. I mean. As near as I got into any sort of paranormal, I was just seeing things that are probably like um, shadow shadow beings and the occasional UFO, but it's not, which is usually just a light, like a bright light in the sky. It doesn't make any sense why it's there and the way it's moving around. But nowadays, there's there's lots of lights in the sky that you sort of look and think, oh, I don't know, what's, what's that, what's that? It takes a while to see what it really actually is. So, um, coming back to New World Order, and this, like I've said, I've mentioned about 
that was a, it was a rabbi and basically he said people go back to Israel. Basically it's because they're going to trash America. So there's, there's no reason for them to be there. So there's almost an invitation if you're a true Jew, go back to Israel because... I mean, basically, they're planning just to topple, topple America and just just burn their bridges, basically. So they leave it as a, a what they would consider the third world country, um, and then move over to Israel and then start trading with China, and then they try to move and infiltrate China. Some of these guys, what they call true, true Jewish, is, isn't really. I mean, they will actually, um, basically, if you want to infiltrate a culture, you have children with people within the culture. That's, I mean, it's different words, more passive warfare. I mean, you can influence them by free marriage. That's, that's what happened with the royals um, sticking into their little circles. Um, because then, then they're kind of um, basically they are valued at that level. So if you had a royal, his royal, you basically had child, had sort of um, um, bastard children with anyone, um, and then you got his like um, potential different sort of royal heirs or what they call half bloods or whatever. Um, It'd be difficult to prove who's a half blood, who isn't. They have to get the lineage out and everything, because these people might want to marry and get into more powerful positions because we all want to progress. And they might say, "Well, I'm, I'm the son of such and such." And so, so basically, to, to avoid creating that situation, they selectively choose who to marry, who has a certain similar status. So there's nothing lost or gained, I guess, in that process of what, you know, who is the right, who hasn't got the right. Um, so, so, the, so basically, all this message from quite a scary guy that's, um, that I was watching, just wanted to watch this interview about this rabbi and basically how he sees the whites as the enemy of, the, of his race, and yet he's as white as I am, so I can't see it. Um, the only difference is probably the nose is more uh, uh, Roman sort of uh, looking in, all, but that's about it, really. Um, and um, so, with the trashing of the planet, if it's the whole planet, maybe they have somewhere else to go that's off-world. Um, it makes sense because you can nuke the place. I mean, if you can live underground for a long time, you have the technology to reverse that radiation. Um, I think quite possibly because basically radiation affects humans than it will more than another species on this planet. Because I've seen, you see like Chernobyl and you have like uh, radioactive wolves and things like that. Because they've got a short lifespan, it's not going to um, cause too much issues, but it doesn't cause deformities at all. Um, but yeah, if a human being had a sort of uh, similar situation, he'd probably likely suffer some illness a lot quicker. And I think that's because our genetics are, are different, basically, than this planet anyway. We're kind of a, a hybrid, hybridised species. Um, and I think there's a lot of evidence to suggest that. Just uh, It's just so different from other... Um, from the nature of this planet, we're not... That's why we find it difficult working with the planet sometimes. So we seem to be working against it. Um, because we're kind of this... We've taken on this role. So, um, so yeah, so there's big concerns of what might happen next. Hopefully, um, I mean, people shouldn't get caught up in personalities. What they think um, Hillary is and what they think Trump is. Because they don't know them. They never will do. They just see this face on TV. And she can smile as much as she likes. And he can smile as much as he likes. Um, when it comes down to the policies... She's she's pro a pro war a policy and she wants to, to do what the um, what her masters have told her to do, which is to um, take over Syria, basically wreck the place, start a war. They send an insurgent team to go out, kill, kill Assad, and then they fund something else, which they've got an ISIS to stick somebody else in charge of the place. They savagely kill more people, and uh, an infrastructure of um, of um, like a global business gets put into place. And they say they're working with these rebels because they they go from one status to another. They go from being the enemy to being the rebel or a mercenary or somebody they can work with. And then they say, well, you have to work with the infrastructure of the country. And then they just use a lot of rubbish to try to, you know, sell it. But basically, it comes down to is is that they're buying oil from their their area at a cheap rate because they fund them to put them in place in the first place. So it's just a it's just a full full circle really. Um, and um, with Israel, they just want to sort of push out the Palestinians so they can take over the land. There's going to be rich resources of um, natural gas and stuff like that. Which is all nuts, because they don't need it. They could actually switch over to um, using some sort of zero-point energy technology or something like that. There's, there's energy always around, um, around you. It's a bit like um, Wi-Fi. You can't see the energy in the air. 
uh, the um, your device can pick up on it and um, send information across. So the, the different types of energy are already around you all the time, like radio signals and things like that. If you can take that and turn it to electricity, then uh, you, you've got a power source. Um, so yeah, so it's um, it's a bit crazy the, uh, the the way it's set up. That's why you've got to look at what what could be above this upper management. As someone said that humans can only have a certain level of technology. Um, and also, what does it take to be to find a certain level of freedom, and um, not have um, stupid vaccines shoved in your kids, and have um, this silly process of where basically, upon birth, you're kind of crown property and stuff like that. But it's all ridiculous stuff. They must just think they must be, they must be looking at it thinking it's a stupid system that's been going on for for ages that needs to be sort of challenged. Um, we all have sort of um, rights to be here, and um, and none of us have more than others. So they just need to f figure that part out um, and stop damaging the world that we live in. Because in the, in the end of the day, it's going to come to some point where you know they have to um, pay their dues in some sense, or take some level of responsibility for causing all the, all the havoc and damage they've done on the planet. Um, so. So what I'm saying, I'm not favouring. I'm not favouring one or the other with with Hillary. I mean, uh, Hillary or Trump. Um, I personally think Trump's better because of policy. I, I, it's, he's looking towards economics, nationalism. Um, Hillary's turning towards globalism and domination. Um, she ha there's no but with the global market, there's the loyalties to the to the global initiative, not the um, national state. So, so you know, like taking over Syria, pay using the money from America to fund a war in Syria so another bunch of rich oil barons can, uh, in essence, take over there and put their own infrastructure in there and get rich, rich out of it. Yet the people that funded the war in the first place when the taxpayers got nothing from it and they just got told they were sorting out terrorism or something. And um, so they get heavily more into their trillions of debt. The other country doesn't. So it's um, you can see how that works. Nationalism is basically... You 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 shrink and then bridges um, globally. You're um, doing things on your own level and you're setting your own sort of demands and that. Uh, but it's always to basically support and fund and develop your own national interests. Um, and so you kind of put in put in a higher status on the people from a, a particular area or region um, and how they operate with the rest of the world, which is fine because you need a level of sovereignty. Otherwise, the countries don't really exist. It's just. Um, one world you can just all drift around in anywhere and then then basically who who then rules you and who has the rights over you so another country can sell you what to do which is which is actually kind of happening with um we've got looking at sort of um bringing in un soldiers and stuff are going to be brought into america because america might have an issue about using their own military on their own ground but they may have a way around it by saying if like a un peacekeepers of um acting as a kind of um, support for the police or something um, uh, once they kick off something there and um, and then what they do is say we're, we're trying to, to contain the situation so we've uh, we're going to have to take your gun sir that's that kind of thing or we're going to need to check your property and then they just take the resources and say well we need to you, you'll basically get this back um, in 28 days we just need to um, log it and put it in a protected place um, because we're the, the martial law in, in, you know, basically martial law. They basically just make up a little rubbish, but they want people to comply with it. However, they're not going to just um, knock on your door and say, um, please, sir, can you hand over your guns? They're going to put their foot through the door and, um, like I say, do a raid. Well, they're, well, they're probably not. You could probably get a bang on the door, open up, open up, and, you know, this is the police and or whatever. Um, and um, and then basically they just like to say to, to just do a, a kind of raid of your property and um, take what they like. So anyway, so um, I've touched upon I touched upon Trump, globalism, nationalism. Um, uh, I mentioned about Hillary as well. I haven't taken any particular views. In just case of people are like, oh, she's great or he's great. I'm not trying to demonise the woman. The woman plays a plays a role in a new world order that needs to change now. Because the old one is not going to work. I mean, it doesn't really offer anyone anything, unless you're super, super rich, anything special. And basically, with the rich people, you can just take away their assets anyway. I mean, at the end of the day, they just as, they just have the same status as as we do. There's the, the difference is they've they've got something, an agreement on in paper that people follow. But if that changes, 
like you, you, like you say, if you go to martial law, government can just take all the assets away from anyway. You could have one rich person takes everything away from everyone else. Well, thanks for that. You, you know, you you fell into the trap of believing that you are somehow support or protect you. But when it comes down to it, I'm just going to take everything from you, and then I just set up a new set, a new system in place, and get rich out of people that still, in essence, are just the, just a type of credit slave. To um, what I what I've got developed, you know, basically just take over, like I say, this parasitic type of um, takeover, and ultimately that's that is the function of e sort of evil in this um, this paradigm of kind of dog eat dog. That's that's why there's there's not more evil in the world because it needs a kind of it needs something to feed off, and also anybody else's evil is their competition so they take them out as well so that's that's how that works anyway this is peter sign off thanks for listening to me and uh speak to you soon